And now, Adam Carolla and ESPN.com's Bill Simmons review another basic cable classic. This week's movie, Face Off. I've been uh, chasing this guy ever since I joined the force. He's the most dangerous and brilliant criminal mind I've ever known. I will become him. Here's Adam on the Adam Carolla Show. Well, there's the premise. Travolta, an undercover agent who takes on the physical appearance of the assumed dead terrorist Nick Nick Cage. Hold on a second. Hmm. Adam Carolla and Bill Simmons are going to analyze this. I got things to say. (laughs) We're going to involve you. Yeah. First, take your gum out. Thanks. No, you're definitely part of this bit. How about a warm up, by the way? Go ahead, you two. <laughs> What's happening, Penguin? Speaks What's again. happening, guys? <laughs> you know, I was supposed to do this in the last hour, but I got bumped by a porn star, which I have no problem with because I got two free DVDs out of it, so I was fine with it. Uh, you have a theory on this movie, Ace, mm-hmm. that they came up with the title before they came up with the script. Mm. I, I think. Almost half the action movies that came up with the title, like Reindeer Games. I think they came up with the title, <laughs> and they decided to shoot a movie around it. Like, they came up with the title, and they hired two guys and said, Listen, guys, you got 21 days. We have Cage and Travolta signed. Mm. We don't really care what the premise is, but just as long as it's there on the 21st, we're ready to go. And one guy has a head the size of a bucket, and the other guy <laughs> has a head that looks like an angelfish when you're looking at it straight on in the right. aquarium. How does this work? I understand the premise where they pull someone's face off and put it on the other guy's head. I could understand it if their head was one wasn't the size of a grapefruit and the other wasn't the size of a beach ball. But they're totally different shaped guys. Their physiques are totally different. And Travol- oh. Travolta has the cleft in his chin. Cage has like the weird rabbit teeth. Yeah. All cleared up. But actually, the doctor's going to explain right now. How they do it? To Travolta, as mm-hmm. Travolta has to go undercover to stop this bomb that's going to go off in the LA Convention Center, and he explains to Travolta how it works. Here's the real science. This is a state-of-the-art morphogenetic template. <clears throat> the inside is modeled on your skull. The outside exactly like Troy's. Then we fit his face on top. Not a replica, but the real thing. Then we simply connect the muscles, tear ducts, and nerve endings. That's, love- all, that's all you do. You just... Connect the muscles and the tear ducts. Put them, like you're hooking up a sprinkler system. This <laughs> muscles, tear ducts, no problem. So By the way, up. Sean Archer, a.k.a. John Travolta, who then becomes Caster Troy, yes. and vice versa, the bad guy, Nicolas Cage. You know, when Caster Troy becomes Sean Archer, he then beds down Joan Allen, his wife. Doesn't she notice some difference in genitalia? <laughs> No, well, they did that. They simply hooked yeah. up the sack. Wang is the same. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Reattached the prepuse. Simply, <laughs> no see. problem. Chest hair, chest same. hair, same everything. But well, here's the part. You know, Travolta now has to decide: Do I go undercover in this maximum security prison, mm-hmm. looking like this this guy who's the most wanted criminal alive, or do I say no to this to this arrangement? And here's his response: What are you asking me to do? Okay, let's see. You're asking me to. Break the law, risk my neck, and you're asking me to put in the dark all the people that love me and trust me. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm yeah. good. I'll do it. If it doesn't work out, uh, I'm just, I look like this this hardened criminal. I'll be in maximum security prison for the rest of my life. It'd be I'm nice in. if he just said no and the movie was only 31 <laughs> minutes long and we all could have gone home. And by the way, there's no good reason why he can't tell the police on the inside, the prison guards. There is no explanation in the movie no. why they can't be privy Damn to what a he's shack. Doing. <laughs> So naive. They've been bought and sold years ago by Castor <laughs> Troy's people. Now, part of the appeal of this movie when you watch it again and again, which we all do, Cage, when he becomes Travolta, and Travolta when he becomes Cage, they have to kind of act like one another. But Travolta's a bad actor. I mean, it's like a very quiet secret that he's just a terrible actor. So he goes over the top trying to be Cage, and he's just bad. Cage is actually does a little bit better Travolta. Than anyway, Travolta. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's Cage when he wakes up without his face, because Travolta's taking it, <laughs> steps out of a coma, <laughs> has no face, but somehow I was able to make a phone call to his buddies, and here's what it sounds like. It's me. <laughs> Believe it. Someone, uh, they took, switched my, for some f***ing, but it's cool. 
we're going to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. How'd the, how'd the talk with the director go? Yeah. <laughs> This is Nikki, baby. Your face is gone. You're picking up the blower. You're calling one of your buddies. Uh, but I want you to have fun with it. Yeah, it's your favorite director, John Woo. John Woo. No, no greater director of gay porn than John Woo. This Here's is a, essentially two hours of gay porn. A lot of slow motion with John Woo. Here's my question, though. How do you talk without lips? It's a good question. Oh, it's, it's, it. I'm going to say it's impossible. Mm. Yeah, it's almost one of those. Does a tree make a sound if it falls in the forest? How how does one talk without lips? You know, it, it's so improbable that during the movie they actually don't even show him without the face. I don't know if they didn't have the CGI ready or if they were like, listen, if if he doesn't have a face, nobody's gonna buy this. So they just have the camera angle from behind his head, right? But now I thought that was the most ridiculous part of the movie. Uh, Dave has other thoughts, which we'll get to. But yes. we had a nice little argument about this once upon a time. I still say making a phone call without a face is the most ridiculous <laughs> part of the movie. I, but I, Dave has a very valid point, which we'll get to. But here's the fourth clip. As you know, I have a rule with action movies. A real bad action movie, you have to say the title somehow in the dialogue. It has to be said. <laughs> yes. Like we, we did it with Con Air last week, yes. where they worked Con Air into the title, and here's how they did it with Face Off. You want to take his face? Yes. His face... <laughs> Thank God they didn't draw attention to it. Skin it's coming off. The face. <laughs> face off. This movie was not made in 1981 either. It was made in a modern era. 1997. Yeah. That's the amazing thing about it. Here's how these movies get made, I'm convinced. They call Nick Cage, and they say, Nick, you want to be part of this movie? And he says, no. And they say, John Travolta has already signed on. And he goes, oh, all right. Well, good enough for John, good enough for me. And then they call Travolta and tell him Cage has already signed off. And he says, oh, good enough for Cage, good enough for me. And then the studio doesn't need to read the script because Cage and Travolta are both in it. It's going to make 100 mil at the box office. And that's how these movies get made. And they also probably, Cage was like, uh, 20 million. Oh, yeah. And then Travolta's like, what's Cage getting? Uh, 15 million. Oh, right. I'm in. And right. somebody probably got paid more than the other guy. Now, Cage, of course, in the maximum security prison, which has the boots, the electromagnetic boots. That, sure. Right. It's, like, it, it's another action movie thing where you have the technology that's really advanced but never ends up actually happening. But the movie doesn't take place in the future, no. does it? Which no. is weird when they weave in these futuristic these futurist, things yeah. where that don't exist as we know them. Well, including when you're in the lockdown, he goes in there, of course, Nicolas Cage, who is actually John Travolta's character. Yes. He goes in to get information from Castor Troy's brother, Pollux Troy. Now, here's my beef. <laughs> Pollux Troy sees his brother, Castor Troy. It's actually Travolta. We as the audience have accepted the premise that the face can come off and be reattached to another human being. Pollux Troy sees his brother and eight seconds into having a conversation with him identifies this as not, in fact, being his brother. Right. He knew. Well, he it just... happens. My sister came over with my nephews last weekend and the minute she walked in through the kitchen door, I knew something was different <laughs> immediately. So I pulled a steak knife on her and I told her to tell me mom's maiden name. You do not. If you expect me to buy your premise, I don't like when people say like face off's a preposterous idea. You can't take somebody's face off and attach. If I go to the movie, I I have accepted that th this can happen. But then the characters in the movie don't get to question it either. Yes, I agree. Well, Cage is able to escape this maximum security prison even though there's electromagnetic boots <laughs> and jumps probably 500 <laughs> feet into the water with helicopter shoot. That's, that's another action movie thing where if you jump in the water, the you're helicopter fine. with the gun, yeah, they can't get you. No, once, <laughs> you, know. once your head gets four inches below yeah. the surface, you're home free. Hey, that, the guys in the hell, I, I can't see him. He, no. uh, you could be in the middle of Lake Haran <laughs> and jump in a lake in a helicopter with a 50 caliber machine gun hovering over your head couldn't do anything about Mid it. Midnight Run's another classic example and Chuck Chaz Grodin the <laughs> kiss up to Dave Chaz Grodin jumps in and the helicopter guys can't find him. Anyway here so Cage escapes goes to see his wife has to explain I'm actually not the guy who killed your son in the amusement park I'm actually your husband wearing his face I couldn't tell you this whole thing <laughs> and here's how he explains it. And it's a special op surgeon uh, gave me uh, Castor's face! <laughs> and uh, 
and then somehow Castor came out of his uh, <laughs> his coma and <laughs> killed everybody <laughs> who knew about the mission, <laughs> but but not before transforming into me. <laughs> And by the way, this is the take after the director told him to reel it in a little bit. The, the other ones were mammoth before this. I was well, actually thinking, acting. when I watched it last night, I was thinking when Cage finished that, they were like, that's it. That's the Oscar clip. <laughs> when, when you're best actor, that's, that's, that's the one we're going to show. So anyway, so Cage foils Travolta, kills him, gets his face back. It's Unfortunately, back. we don't have a clip of the Why most improbable scene in the movie. Dave, here's the best Dave is going to explain My it. favorite thing in this in this ridiculous picture is this. You know, John Travolta, he has his face taken off, and mm -hmm. he may never get it back for all he knows. He's not getting it back. Then he squares off with his arch rival. He gets stabbed and shot and almost killed, and then he goes through the surgery again to have his face reattached. Mm -hmm. Now, the last scene of the movie is Joan Allen is at home on the computer. You know, she's playing around. That's his surf, wife. Surfing right. the net, his wife. She's surfing the net. And then Travolta comes home from this, you know, life-threatening experience. He gets out of the hospital. He walks through the front door, and she's like, oh, it's today the day you're getting out of the hospital. Yeah. I thought it was next Wednesday. <laughs> I'm sorry. You couldn't pick him up? You couldn't have picked him up at the hospital after all he's been through? Well, he wouldn't have the homecoming scene that and way then, if he did. And then the daughter comes out, oh, Dad. And the first thing she says is, I'm sorry I shot you. Yeah, <laughs> and that's one of the last lines of the movie is "I'm sorry I shot you," and uh, it's just a classic, one of the best ever. And I'm glad we were able to recap it. Well, basic cable classics with the sports guy Bill Simmons from ESPN.com.